Whether you call it painted picture, vivid vision, we could get into an hour long debate on what you actually call the visualization process. Uh, but regardless of what you call it, I want to talk about how incredibly important it is to get into a routine where you visualize the future of the business. And I would do mine the first week in January every year. And I would imagine, I would literally visualize myself on New Year's Eve of that year. So right now it's 2018. Uh, in January of this year, I sat down, it took me about four days to do it. And I imagined that it was New Year's Eve, December 31st, 2018. And in as vivid language as I could possibly come up with, in first person present tense, as if it were New Year's Eve of 2018, I described all sorts of different facets of the business. So what does our website look like? Who's on the team? What, what clients are we servicing? What new clients did we find that year? What clients did we, did we move on from that year? Um, how's our operational processes? How did they evolve? How did our sales process evolve? Every facet of the business that was, that was important I imagine if we had the absolute perfect year, and this is a really important point, if everything went absolutely perfect, what would the business look like on New Year's Eve of that year? Now, I contend that if you get to New Year's Eve of 2018 and you pull out your painted picture or your vivid vision, and more than 50% of what you wrote came true, then you probably weren't really doing a visualization exercise. You were probably more just predicting what was going to happen for the year. This is a time to really broaden your thinking and, and bring your creativity to bear. This is a creativity exercise more than just documenting what you think or know will happen in the given year. So be really broad and really creative. Put yourself in that place. That's why you write it in present tense and first person. You really want to imagine that you're there, it's New Year's Eve, you're about to celebrate with your team or with your family, and you're looking back on the year, and it was by every measure perfect. What does the business look like on that day? And my process is to be in an ultra creative place. I actually do ours at our retreat property in the Florida Keys where I'm surrounded by nature, and you know, it's just a really inspiring environment. So. Find an inspiring place, and that doesn't mean at your desk, in your office. Uh, find an inspiring place, a place where you can really connect to your creativity and you know how you visualize, and go really deep on the imagining. And I'll, I'll take you know five or six pages of notes of just ideas, but then when I write it, it's written in very descriptive, detailed. It's almost a narrative type language, and it takes me three or four days to really get to that place and but it's it's some of the best time you'll spend for you it's the opportunity to really think about your future and you know I, I could go into you know two days worth of research but when you write things down and you visualize it's amazing what happens it activates this part of your brain that starts to see patterns in the world that it didn't see before but more importantly it's a way for you to be omnipresent with your team where they have this document all the time and can continually refer back Think about it as if I had four days to spend with my senior team and I could share everything that I think we should be thinking about this year, this is your chance to do that. And then you have a document that, that stays with them. My big lesson came back in, I don't know, it was 2010 or 2011. And this is such an intense process that when I finish, it's like, I'm done. I don't want to think about it anymore. I, I kind of like create this thing and then I give it out and then I'm happy to never have to do it again until January of next year. And it was July of, of I think 2010 and we were in a, a quarterly planning meeting and we're sitting around and I made some off the cuff remark about the operations group and something that we should be thinking about and doing. And my COO at the time pulls out this document out of his backpack and it's this tattered kind of, you know, 15 pages stapled together. There's notes on it, it's dog-eared and it's wrinkled up. And and he said, he said, you know, you're saying that we should be doing this, but that's not what you said in the painted picture. And I looked at him and I said, you still have that thing? I forgot about that the day I finished it. He goes, yeah, I, I probably read it once a week. Like it's, you know, it's kind of my guideline to what I should be thinking about. 
And there were 13 of us in the room and I looked around and I said, does anyone else have a painted picture? And nine of the 13 pulled this ratty looking thing out of their briefcases or backpacks and said, yeah, we look at it all the time. So that was when I realized, okay, this, this document has a lot more staying power and, and importance than maybe even I gave it. It was more, when I was doing it back then, it was a personal exercise for me. I didn't even realize the impact it was having on the team, but I've, I, over time I've kind of come to realize how important that is for the whole group. And it's like literally your chance to, to get everything out on paper and, and be with your team when they're making decisions throughout the year through this document. It's incredibly, incredibly powerful.